Hi, class. Welcome to a chapter eight's discussion on uh, project management. I'm going to start our slides and we'll be ready to go. Just a little housekeeping uh, before we start our discussion on project management. I posted a quiz today for chapters 13 and 14. It will be our last quiz. I also posted a forum topic, which will be our last forum. There'll be no uh, quiz for chapter 15. I've also completed your final. It's going to be 40 multiple choice questions. I think it's pretty fair. Much of the content I wanted from you guys for the last half of the semester should be included in your Watson projects. So that's why I was okay with having this be a multiple choice exam. And I will post that uh, next week. So our goals in project management are to know why we have project management and why it's so essential, in particular to developing information systems. So we've seen the system development life cycle last week. Now the project management piece is really managing that life cycle. We'll look at methods for selecting and evaluating projects. We'll look at the business value of systems and the risks involved in um, projects related to information systems and how they can be managed. Our video case for um, this chapter is NASA, it goes back to the space shuttle days, so it is kind of dated, but in my mind, it's very important. I used to include this video case in my written final exams, so I hold this case to be very prevalent to our discussion of project management. I also want to make you aware that the course evaluation should be live in the MyMaris portal. I'm having an on-campus class do it today. So hopefully well, today, so you guys know it's Tuesday, April 30th. Um, so hopefully you will all give uh, feedback, whether good, bad, and indifferent, it's important that your voice is heard. So professors like me can do a better job for you all. It's important to know what we do well and what we should um, make better so future classes can learn from your experience. So please participate if you can. So why do projects fail? We already seen projects fail because people are resistant to change. It's too hard to use. When I've mentioned before in class, a system we had a Sincora guarantee when it was Excel Capital Assurance that took too long to develop, cost too much money didn't meet user needs, didn't meet requirements, was hard to use, poorly organized, wound up costing millions of dollars when it shouldn't have, wound up not being used and scrapped almost immediately, often because a lot of people jobs. Well, that's exactly what a runaway project is. Over schedule, over budget, failed to perform as advertised. And really, it's 30 to 40 percent of IT projects. And it starts with our business analyst not getting the business requirements right, or him or her transferring the business requirements, our business processes to our designers and our developers. Our developers not caring enough about our end users' needs or wants to program a user interface that will work for them. And ultimately, we talked about all semester how key good data is, how bad data breaks systems. If we're not managing projects properly, and we'll see techniques to manage projects, particularly in Gantt chart, where we're able to organize resources, deliverables, deadlines, and cost. If we don't do all those things properly, we're going to have a system that costs too much, takes too long, doesn't meet performance measures, and doesn't give us the benefits we need. So if we can't manage these four topics you see on the slide, 
why put a system in place already? Because what we already have in place is ultimately going to be better than something that costs too much and takes too long to build. So our project manager should plan our work, assess our risk, going back to my constant discussions on lottery tickets. How much risk, how much reward are we going to get? We have to know our resources available and estimate how much resources we'll need. We need to organize our work. Does our work have prerequisites to other work? Can we do things at the same time? We're going to delegate and assign tasks, making sure our workforce resources are properly managed. We're going to control execution. We're going to report progress. We're going to manage conversion. That's that part we learned about in system development life cycle when we move something from test to production. Project management team will manage that process for us. And lastly, we're going to analyze results in the new system, send that back to management as well as the development team, and that's that maintenance and production piece of the SDLC that we talked about. Going along with our goals of project management, we have some variables. Scope, time, cost, quality, and risk. As we've seen all semester as well, we have a division of labor. We have that division of labor within information systems projects as well. We've seen how the organization has a hierarchy, we've seen how IT has a hierarchy. Well, here's the hierarchy of IS projects. It starts with a corporate strategic planning group. They're responsible for our strategic work. Usually it's board members and C-suite members. We have a steering committee that re reviews and approves all our plans. We have our project management group that oversees our projects. They manage our portfolio. The project team, that's our operational workers. So if we look at our traditional hierarchy, we have the corporate strategic group and senior management. We have the steering committee and project management group at middle management, and the project team as operational. Same hierarchy we've seen all semester long. as we just seen here. A good project manager will have a plan in place that identifies the projects that will deliver most value. It should link to our business plan or our strategic plan. And it will have a direction on system development with things like purpose of the plan, how it aligns to our strategic plan, current systems, what problems we have that our current systems aren't covering, that we need a new system, new developments, management strategy, how we're going to implement, and what our budget is. For our plan to be successful, we have to know what's existing and document. We have to know what infrastructure that we have in place and document it. We have to fully document what we need for the new system as well as its infrastructure. We need to identify what decision-making improvements we're going to have, maybe what executive support improvements we're going to have. We're going to develop KPIs. We're going to have a clear understanding of our long and short-term goals and requirements. Our project managers are really responsible for what plans we already have in place. We often have a project management office headed by a PMO, project manager officer, who oversee our project managers and organization. We have this group to evaluate what projects we have in place, what are some alternatives. We have to know what projects are already in place, what our assets are doing. We have to know our risk profile, which we talked about in the last few weeks of the, uh, our semester. High benefit, low risk. 
will take that part, um, project every time. High benefit, high risk will monitor it, but probably won't do. Low benefit, low risk. And we're probably just going to do it. Won't cost us much. We won't get much, but maybe that's that automation we talked about system with the domain. And lastly, low benefit, high risk will never do. As we see here, so you avoid low benefit, high risk. You examine high and high, but usually don't do it. Low risk, high benefit, we're going to develop. And low, low, the routine projects, things that are easy for us to do, that we'll just probably do anyway. Some project managers use a scoring system to evaluate alternate projects. It gives it a weight to features of the system, and we get a calculated weight. It kind of looks like this. This is an example from our text of a score model for an ERP system. We have our criteria or our steps of a project on the left side. We have a weight, and we have some percentages and an overall score. Costs and benefits of information systems can be seen and not seen. So tangible and intangible. Tangible benefits are ones we can put a value on. Intangible benefits are ones we really can't put a price tag on, like more efficient work, better decision making. So those systems are executive support, decision support, maybe collaboration systems where you can't fully get a benefit on. But supply chain and customer relationship management, we can put a price tag on because we can see the transactional differences, the customer retention, the customer acquisition costs go down. So tangible and intangible benefits. Part of any information system is looking whether it has to be budgeted and how we allocate those funds. So we look at capital budgeting models. We measure long-term capital projects, and we evaluate our firms in and outflows of cash to determine whether we can afford a system or not. Um, we use some criteria for judging projects, payback method, how long it takes for us to pay back what we put in our return on investment, net present value, and internal rate of return. On the project for Chapter 14 in Dirt Bugs, you'll have to include payback method, ROI, net present value, and IRR. There are limitations of these financial models as they don't always capture the intangible benefits. It's important to realize we have benefits that can't be measured. So how do we evaluate this? So we looked at risk here, high, 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 low, low, high, low, low. We do so by looking at our size. How much is our project going to cost? How much time is it going to take? What parts of our organization are we going to disrupt? How complex is our organization? Are resources available? Do we have enough cash coming in to pay for it? Do we have enough money in return to, I'm sorry, do we have enough money to pay for our project and when do we expect to pay it back? What's our structure? Is our team familiar with hardware and software? Our question for the chapter will be this class discussion. So you'll report back to me with me a homework. The answer is to, can the National Health Service go paperless? When I got the Greystone, I was trusted with making our agency paperless, and I was able to do so in about a year. Um, we've greatly reduced our paper flow. Everything is pretty much digital now. Much more efficient bill paying, payroll pain, project management.
So let's see what the National Health Service has gone through with paperless. So include this in your homework tonight. Excuse me. Along with project management is change management. Managing change is an essential function of any IT implementation. It's something that we're frequently tested on and audited on. And it's important so we can manage the effect of our systems development and conversion on our organization. We're going to need someone to manage the process for us, a change management agent. We usually have it as a system analyst or a operational manager within IT. We look at impact of our change, who's doing the change, when it's going to occur, um, what our change windows will be, how much downtime can the organization have to implement a change, what's the rollback, should a change happen, rollback means if we're putting a change to say a system in place, what happens if it doesn't work? What's our plan to back out of it and leave our system the way it was before we try to implement the change? We have to understand what the role of the end user is, not only in the change process, but in the system development lifecycle and project management itself. If our users are involved, we're going to meet our requirements. If we meet our requirements, we're going to use the system and not have too much um, worry about change, too much dissent. We need support from management. All our change has to come from top down. I look in here at Greystone, and we've implemented no before, which I gave you guys access to beginning of the semester. And we do security trainings every month. We still, we've been doing this for almost a year now. We still have employees that have a hard time managing their timelines. So too many times than I want to make you guys aware of, we have to have our CEO remind them that they have working time. But with management support, we know we're going to get the funding. We know we'll get help for getting through change, getting through politics. Sorry. Challenges in change management. Enterprise applications have a high rate of failure. They take a long time, they cost a lot of money, and they introduce a lot of change. We don't always get management support. People wind up changing their jobs. They may have different career paths. We may not be able to get people in place. It's important to realize this impact. What also can affect change management is mergers and acquisitions. Integration projects in where we integrate two systems or change from one system to another have a high rate of failure due to the nervousness about what's going to happen to our jobs in a merger and acquisition. Um, what our organization is going to look like technologically after a merger. I can think back to a time three years ago where in August, my wife's company took over OHL, it's an Ohio based logistics company. And my wife's part of Geodis was forced to move to this other company's HR platform. There was a lot of grief using the new system, a lot of training that should have happened that never happened, a lot of non management support of the change. In fact, my wife's management didn't want the change at all, so they were even resistant to the change. It took a good year and a half for this HR system before we get integrated within the Geodis um, infrastructure. And that's a terrible delay, especially for our HR system. People were just concerned about losing what they've known. How do we control risk? Well, we control risk by managing risk, managing our project. We have tools in place that 
can help us manage the risk of runaway projects. We have to know where our risk will be. If we plan properly and document our project, we should be able to cut down bottlenecks, um, make sure our resources are available, and effectively report back to management the status of our organization. We're going to really look only at a Gantt chart on my project management duties. I have never used a PERT chart. I use Gantt charts, so we'll pretty much stick to Gantt charts in our discussion here. And they're very visual, visual and easy to understand, which we see a Gantt chart in the next three charts. On the left side, we see our tasks. Next to it, DA means days, how long we expect it to last. Who is the initials of who's assigned to the tasks? And the orange bars are the duration of the tasks. So we see the first two tasks can be worked on simultaneously. We can't work on security maintenance until it looks like security profiles are done and security reviews done. We can work on orientation, data dictionary, coordination of queries, and data dictionary cleanup pretty much at the same time. This isn't really done well because the data dictionary cleanup wouldn't come until after database design, in which the maintenance won't start until the cleanup is done. So this isn't the greatest example that our author gave us because some tests will have a prerequisites. But it gives you the idea that this project will take a good amount of time to complete. Our last page shows our resource summary. So we see all the tests that say what he is doing. Then we see how many days in total we're working on our project. We said we're not going to discuss a per chart. How do we overcome user resistance? I really believe it's participation throughout the system development life cycle, proper education, proper training. The bullet here on the fourth bullet says improving the end user interface. I want to say easy to use end user interface. So if we're going to give our knowledge workers and our expert system users easy to use interfaces. Why aren't going to give it to everybody? Let's cut down on that training and education. Let's get people working as quickly as possible. Management, of course, will help us. We have to know as an organization how our systems are going to affect our, the way we do business. And in ways we design for our economics of our people is letting them work comfortably. Yeah, we're not developing economic systems when we're talking about the information systems project management, but let's make people comfortable. Chairs at proper height, back support, neck support, proper use of keyboards, proper use of mice, teaching people how to type properly. We do an impact analysis to see what is going to happen to our organizational structure, what happens to our decision making. And then lastly, we look at issues with our users and how they may affect our organization as well. Project management software tools really come down to Microsoft Project, whether it's PC-based or cloud-based. It's what the vast majority of project managers will use and let us create our Gantt charts. And that's it, guys. So turn in that interactive session to me, handle the last forum, do the assigned questions on NASA. I'll have a study guide for the final up very shortly. And check the date of the final on our syllabus, which I'll, um, and I'll post the final after I record our chapter 15 lecture next week, and we should be good to go.
Thanks, guys.